Hey guys. Hi, teacher. Sorry for being late. I my, the password was not working. I don't know why. Because I can't really see it, so I have to be trying now. I couldn't log in. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. How about you? Everybody's accommodating right now. <laughs> <laughs> Get comfortable. Let's begin. I'm doing great. I'm glad to see you again. The majority of you are here already, so that's awesome. And uh, after class, did you do something last night or you went straight to bed? <laughs> what did you do? Well, actually, I was kidding yesterday, teacher, when I told you that I was going to celebrate at the same hour. I had already done it before. <laughs> no, I imagine so. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But maybe some people did something after class. Who knows? Hey, but guys, it's Father's Day. It's a holiday, right? It's a national holiday, isn't it? You're yes, it is. Yes, it is. I don't know if it's international. No, national. Oh, uh, national, yes. It yes, is, it right? Is. You, you didn't work yesterday, did you? No. No. Yeah, I don't understand why we had classes. I was very confused. Like, well, this is weird. Hmm. Okay. You, need to, you need to have double pay. Because of <laughs> Yep, you have a point there. Yep. All right. <laughs> well, um, let me see. Did we finish this? We, oh, yeah, 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 we did it. But I was giving the answer to someone. Let's go to section five, guys. I think we're finally going to start it. And this is going to be the last one. Section five, if I'm not wrong. We finished section four, right? Stories, complete the story. Check the correct phrase. Mm. Final exam. Okay, can you tell me what section we left off, please? Let's try to find it. Let's continue versus simple past. Yeah, that was the last one. Okay, great. Yep, I think we can finish a lot of this tonight and then start section five next week. Alrighty, read the objective, please. Miss Elvia. Okay. Complete the news history using the past continue and the simple past. Use the verse given. Okay. So, the first. number one, you said, go ahead. Okay. While, while divers were working off the coast of Florida, they discovered a shipwreck containing gold worth two million dollars. We're working. Very good. Cindy, Cindy, are you cold? Sorry? Are you cold? Yeah. <laughs> because okay. I am. Okay. They uh, discovered a shipwreck containing gold worth $2 million. Great. Next, Karen. Uh, divers were filming a show about the coral reef where they found a gold. Coral reef. You know what coral reef is, right? Coral reef, yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Now let's see another story. Gabriel. Okay. As a woman. As a woman um, walked her pet poodle down the street. Yeah, but we're saying as a woman, so while she was doing it is what it means? The action was in progress. Uh, as a woman um, was walking? Yeah. Yes. This as is a synonym of wild, guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, next one, Raul. Is everybody on the platform? If you haven't completed this, let's do it right now. Please, so you don't accumulate it. We can do it together, section 4.4. 4. Um, okay. So. A hairstylist noticed 
then throw the window and suddenly had a great idea. Great idea. Die, great eye. Great idea, okay. Uh, Fatima. Later, while he was creating a new line of hair care products for dogs and cats. Juan Francisco. He came up with a new slogan, even animal had bad hair days. He came up with, came up with. Came up with a new slogan. Right, the intonation I'm trying to correct, okay. Very good. Thank you. We did it, no mistakes, awesome. So we're good to start the next topic. And let's read the objectives, Carlos. I'm sorry, the last one was came up. Came up with. It's a phrasal verb. Thank you. And you have to use the entire one. So like this, come up with. Came up with. That's like se le ocurrió, okay? So come up with. You have to use it in the past, came up with, or I hope I will come up with something. So you can conjugate it in any form. Something. Or an idea, he came up with a slogan, you saw in that case, right? Come up with an idea, a solution, okay? This is how you use it. Perfect, so, thank you. Carlos. Me? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, um, lesson objective. In this class, you will learn how to develop skills in listening for details, develop note, Talking, taking skills, listen to news stories. Great, new broadcast. Hey, we're gonna answer the following questions. Let's read the questions. Jose Cornejo. Jose Cornejo, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. The, where did the first story happen? Yes, Katya. What happened on the first story? The first story. The first story. JC? You're on mute, JC. <laughs> what did you do? Where yeah. did you... The second, the second story happened. Okay, Amy, be ready, guys. And then Noe, okay. Teacher, I'm sorry, I just joined to the class. Okay, hey, read number four, please. Uh, what happened on the second story? Right, Anoy. Where did the third story happen? Leila. I don't hear you, Leila. You're not on mute, so it's probably your microphone. I couldn't hear you. Mm -mm. No, I don't hear you. <laughs> and you're not on mute. That's weird. So check it so that when we practice, we can hear you, right? I think I hear you now. I don't know. Well, number six is, I think I hear you, Leila. You just have to speak louder. Okay. Uh, what happened on the third story? Hi. Now I hear you. Very I good. I have a question. Okay. I have a question, teacher. Go ahead. Uh, is for the in the questions mm -hmm. why in some questions the verb is in simple past and and the sentence no didn't uh, doesn't use the verb the auxiliary the auxiliary do why for example the second the second example what happened why this sentence uh, uh, 
doesn't use the auxiliary the verb deal. Yes. Um, because. Um, okay, I don't I don't know how to explain this, but for example, if I ask you a question with who, we don't know the subject, right? So I say who who lives with you. Look, and it looks like a sentence, right? It's not a question. Who lives with you? It's not like who does live with you. This would be absolutely incorrect. Okay, because mm -hmm. we don't know the subject. And in this case, since the question is what. It's like we don't know the subject either. So what happened? Hey, what happened, right? Not what did happen. Because you don't have a subject, that's why. If you noticed in this question, there's not a subject. And in this one, no, you know what? I'm gonna, I don't want you to get confused. I'm gonna say, who lives here? We don't have a subject, right? Yeah, we don't, we happened, don't have a subject. We don't have a subject. So that's why the, the, the structure cannot be respected because we don't have that element of grammar to conjugate it like that. So if you're missing the element, you need to write it as a sentence. So it's a question in the form of a sentence. Does that make sense? Okay. So it's because of the lack of a subject that the structure doesn't use an auxiliary. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, uh, could be also, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I guess, I don't know, but could be because the verb is already in past? Mm -mm. No, okay. because you cannot decide. I understand where you're coming from, Carlos. But for example, this is what you mean. I'm going to give you an example. This is incorrect, by the way, guys. So be aware that I'm not explaining something that is correct. So I cannot decide to say, for instance, where did you eat? And then say where you ate. Okay, that is incorrect. Okay, I cannot decide, well, right now I'm going to use the auxiliary and now I'm going to use the verb in the past because you have to respect this, this structure, okay? But in this case, we have the subject you. That's why we use the regular structure. In this case, what happened? And in the story, it's simply a complement, all right? But what happened is a question. We don't have a subject. What happened? I don't know, a lot of things. Look, if I answer this question, is a lot of things happened. Now, this is my subject and this is my verb. But I didn't know the subject because that was actually my question. Who lives here? I don't know, Maria lives here. So now I have a subject, but I didn't know the subject. That was my question. So when you want to know the subject, you don't respect the structure, right? Okay? Does okay. it make sense? Thanks. Yes. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tishira. All right, my pleasure. So let's listen. I will play the audio for you. Go to section 4.6 so that you can answer the questions and then tell me what the answers are, okay? Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll develop skills in listening for details. Develop note-taking skills. Listen to news stories. We will listen to an audio program with different news stories. Your task is to take notes and identify where did the story take place, when did it happen, and what actually happened. So let's listen to the audio program at this time. A man was seriously injured on Sunday by a three and a half meter snake in a town in Thailand. It seems that the man ran over to see the snake after friends told him that it was beside one of the town's main roads. The man put it around his neck, and while he and his friends were walking home, the snake squeezed more and more tightly. Luckily, the man got the snake off his neck in time. Two teenage girls who disappeared from a ship were found alive and well. The girls turned up on Friday near a small town on the northeast coast of Australia. The girls said they were visiting a friend on the ship and fell asleep in their friend's cabin. When they woke up, the ship was heading for Singapore. So they jumped off the ship, swam to shore, and had to walk for several days to get to the nearest town. Early Tuesday morning in California, two police officers were chasing a car thief when they suddenly lost control of their vehicle and drove into a river. 
Surprisingly, the thief went back to the scene of the accident and helped rescue the officers from the river. The local police department dropped all charges against the thief for saving the officers' lives. Okay, we're going to listen one more time. Identify where did the story take and what actually... So let's listen to the audio program at this time. A man was seriously injured on Sunday by a three and a half meter snake in a town in Thailand. It seems that the man ran over to see the snake after friends told him that it was beside one of the town's main roads. The man put it around his neck and while he and his friends were walking home, the snake squeezed more and more tightly. Luckily, the man got the snake off his neck in time. Two teenage girls who disappeared from a ship were found alive and well. The girls turned up on Friday near a small town on the northeast coast of Australia. The girls said they were visiting a friend on the ship and fell asleep in their friend's cabin. When they woke up, the ship was heading for Singapore. So they jumped off the ship, swam to shore, and had to walk for several days to get to the nearest town. Early Tuesday morning in California, two police officers were chasing a car thief when they suddenly lost control of their vehicle and drove into a river. Surprisingly, the thief went back to the scene of the accident and helped rescue the officers from the river. The local police department dropped all charges against the thief for saving the officers' lives. So let's check the answers. Number one says, where did this first, where did the first story happen? In Thailand. 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 Very good. What happened on the first story? Very good. Okay, where did the second story happen? In Australia. In Australia. In Australia. Australia. Okay. For what happened on the second story? Two teenagers who disappeared were found. Were found. Okay. Two teenage teenage girls. There it is. Five. In Hollywood, California. In Hollywood, California. Hollywood, California. California. Try to say that. Okay. In California. He's trying to make them like. So two. California. And six. What happened on the third story? Two police officers were rescued by the team. They were rescued by the team. Chasing. What is chasing? Chasing is there where um, okay, it's, not the same to, it's not the same to follow someone than to chase someone because when you're chasing them, you're trying to capture them. Okay. But as a synonym, I would say follow with the intention of capturing. Okay. Let's see, because I have no idea. And I trust you with the great. Good job. Very good. Um, who asked me this question about the subject? Because that was a very interesting question. This is the second time in my life I explained this because it's I you know nobody explained this to me ever. You kind of just get it. But um later I will send you I will try while you're practicing and I'm listening, I will try to write some extra some examples, okay, of sentences because you're gonna see this a lot, not only in the past. You're gonna see a lot of questions that are lacking the subject. And therefore, its structure is modified. Okay, so I'm gonna like write like lack of subject. Mm, and I didn't study this, so I have no idea how to. But it, this is the way it works, I'm sure. So lack of subject, uh, questions. This is gonna work in the past, present, future, any tense. So I will try to write some examples for you. Okay, so that it's clear, and you make sure you're saying it the right way when you have to use it. It was a great question. Anyway. Um, now, let's go to section 4.7. Read the objective, please. Let's see who has not read. Um, Blanca Figueroa. Hello. Hi, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of this lesson, you will learn to use the past perfect tense. Great. Past perfect tense. Oof. Getting better and better by the day. All right. 
So now I need you to take your notebooks out. Please pay 100% attention, okay? So that we can practice and move on quickly because this is a long topic, a very long topic, but we'll see. If you pay attention, it should be easy. Okay, ready? Yes. Hi. Hold on, I'm gonna play it from YouTube so you can see it bigger. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express an event that occurred before another event in the past. For example, I went to a party last weekend, but when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. I'll explain the structure in a little bit, but the most important thing to remember about this topic is how and when to use it. Therefore, I would like to spend a few minutes giving lots of examples. So if um, we write the example that I, I gave to you in uh, just a couple of seconds ago, um, I let me write that down. I went to a party last weekend, but uh, when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. Okay, so if we think about that example there, what I'm doing is I'm talking about two events that occur in the past. And it's important for me to relate the two because that will uh, emphasize my idea. It will outline what I'm trying to express. I went to a party last week. This is what took place last weekend. So that is that X, if you will. All right, but when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight that in a different color. Um, my friends had eaten all the food. This is the event in the circle that you see there. This happened before I got to the party. So whenever I say I went to a party last weekend and my friends ate all the food, what that means is that I went to the party. And when I got there, there was food at the party, and then my friends ate it. But that's not really what I want to express. What I really want to explain is that I went to the party and there was no more food left because something had happened before that, and that was the fact that my friends ate the food. So that's why this is really important. You need to know when to use this particular topic. So I'm going to continue to give you more examples. Now let's look at the examples on the chart. As you can see, the examples on the chart um, refer to uh, basically it's a it's a person that uh, was at the gym and uh, he forgot to lock his locker, and therefore this is what took place. Right? As we'll analyze the examples that are there, I was working out and I had put my stuff in my locker. All right, wait, let, let's stop there for a second. I was working out is the past event. That's that X, if you will. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to relate the second event to that past event. And I have put my stuff in my locker. So th that I have put my stuff in my locker is the past perfect event that happened before this past event. So it's that little blue circle that you see there. When I came back, that's that event there. That's the uh, past event. Okay. Someone had stolen my wallet. So um, I came back, but before this event, someone had stolen my wallet. All right. They were able to steal it. That's the past event. So that's that X, if you will. Because I have forgotten to lock the locker. All right. Now, that is the past perfect event, as you can see there. Let me just give one last example here. I didn't have any money. Because I had forgotten my wallet at home. So what I want to explain is that I didn't have any money. But I want to give a reason on why I didn't have any money. So I'm talking about two events from the past. One is that I didn't have any money. That's that X that you see there. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, highlight that in uh, a let me go ahead and highlight that in a greenish color. Second, all right. And um, before this, I want to explain that I had forgotten my wallet at home. And that's the reason why I didn't have any money, right? So as you can see, both events are, um, are related.
So, how was this topic? Easy? So, so. Interesting. You think it's easy? Yeah. Oh, wow, look at you. <laughs> Actually, past perfect is one of the most complicated grammar tenses. Do you know what? Um, it's pre-advanced and advanced, both at the same time. So you're going to be using this tense a lot in advance, okay? Um, I would like to show you this video. Let me see, present perfect, I mean, past perfect, if we have one. Yeah, there is one, I remembered. So let's watch this video. It's three minutes, but it's pretty clear. So in case you didn't get it with the first one, maybe with this one, and then I will answer any of your questions, okay? The past perfect tense is used to describe an action that happened before an action in the simple past. The formula is subject plus had plus past participle. We can use the past perfect to tell us which event happened first. For example, if we add the word had to this sentence, Peter had moved to Paris, we know that this action happened first. But if we put had in the other sentence, Mary had found a job in Paris. Now, this action happened first. Here's an example. He failed his test because he hadn't studied. Here we use the past perfect tense to describe the first action and the past tense to describe the second action. Another example. She had not seen snow until she visited Canada. Again, we use the past perfect to describe the first action and the past simple to describe the second action. Using the past perfect can change the meaning of a sentence. Let's compare the two sentences. When he arrived, the train left versus when he arrived, the train had left. In the first sentence, when he arrived, the train left. This means he arrived and the train left immediately after. But if we say when he arrived, the train had left, this means that the train left first and then he arrived. So, he missed the train. In addition, the past perfect can be used to express a past wish or a regret. For example, he wishes he hadn't drunk so much last night. The past perfect is also used in reported speech and the third conditional. We'll review this in another lesson. And you will learn that in another level. <laughs> okay, so you don't need that. Uh, was this video clear? Yes. Yes, yes it was. Okay, yes. great. So uh, whenever you're saying something in the past, make sure that if you want to say that something happened before another action, you have to use past perfect. And it's the same as in Spanish, guys. So we use it a lot. We say, había llegado, for example. So just say it in English, all right? The same way we use it in, in Spanish, okay? But the problem is that sometimes in Spanish, we don't use past perfect. So that's a problem. <laughs> Make sure you use it in Spanish as well, all right? So that you get your brain trained to use express, I mean, past perfect all the time in Spanish and in English. Try to use it more. Okay. Um, so I guess we're going to do an exercise now. Let me check. One second. Okay, here it is. Let's go to section 4.9. Mm -mm. 
Let's see how long this is. Hi, everyone. All right, this is how to form the negative form. Okay, the affirmative, but also negative. So it's something we still have to watch. Are you taking notes of everything, guys? The examples and everything? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I know it's long, but it's necessary. So let's watch it and then we'll do exercises, all right? By the end of this class, you'll be able to form past perfect statements. We'll learn the structure and practice. So let's get started. In our previous lesson, we learned about the past perfect. And it's always important to keep that in mind. So we use the past perfect to express an event that occurred before another event in the past. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about the structure. So let's get started. I would like to start by making positive statements. So the first thing that I would like to point out is uh, just the structure, and then we'll see how that structure works. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so that you can see clearly. So in order to form the past perfect, we're going to have a subject, and then that is going to be followed by an auxiliary. That happens to be hat, as you can see there, color in red. And then after that, we, uh, we're going to follow the past participle of the verb. So we're going to include the past participle of the verb. And then finally, we will have a complement to that sentence. In the example, we see that we're using the past event and the past perfect event. And that's because we're combining two tenses together and we're using those accordingly. So as you can see, we, we see the past event here and then we have the past perfect event as a continuation of that. But I mentioned that um, we, the, these sentences can be separate or they can be together. So let's look at the examples at this time. Um, I mentioned that we're going to have some sort of subject, so we're going to say someone, all right? And I'm going to borrow that second example that you see there at the bottom. Uh, this follows the axular verb. This, in this case, is going to be hat. And then this is going to be this is going to follow the past participle of whatever verb that I'm using. So in this case, uh, the verb it's steal, all right, and the past participle of that verb is stolen. Okay, so someone had stolen my wallet. Just to emphasize uh, what we're doing, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, try to see if I can. If I can point this out in the right place so that we can clearly see what is it that I'm talking about. So the subject is someone. All right, so I should color this maybe blue, or the same thing as it's in red. The auxiliary verb is in red. And then the past participle is uh, the verb that we're going to use in uh, the past participle. So in this case, I'm using the color uh, green. So let's look at the other examples that are on this chart up here. I have put my stuff in my locker. So first of all, we have the subject is I. It follows the auxiliary verb had. And then the past participle of the verb, in this case, is put. Um, and then we will include a complement. I have put my stuff in my locker. My stuff in my locker will be the complement. Um, finally, we have another sentence. Uh, that we want to emphasize and so let me do that right now okay so we have I have forgotten to lock the locker so uh, once again we have the subject in that sentence is I excluder have the past participle of the verb forget it's forgotten and then the complement becomes to lock the locker now quickly what I want to explain is how to make negative statements in the past perfect let me go ahead and um, give a couple of examples here. Um, there are no negative sentences in this little chart, so I'm going to make those and I'm going to try to um, <clears throat> make sense of them. So let me first explain the structure of that. Uh, so the structure to make negative sentences, negative statements or negative sentences. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, the only thing that changes is that instead of had, we're going to include hadn't. Uh, by the way, this is also the same thing as saying had not. So you might see that either by saying had not or hadn't. Now, the most common thing to do is that we will use the contraction. 
All right, so most of the time you'll see contractions to that effect. So let me give you then a few examples and then um, I'm going to have you do a few examples as well. All right. So I'm going to try to see if I can fit those in into the structure that we see here. Subject is I. In this case, I mentioned we're going to use Hadden. All right. So let me just make sure that we're using the appropriate colors here just to make sure that we're understanding what we're doing. So. Uh, in that case, that's the auxiliary verb, uh, and in this case, because it's a negative, we, we're going to say hadn't. Um, then we use the past participle of that verb, uh, so in this case, um, it's lock, uh, the past participle that is locked. Um, maybe another quick example that you can probably relate to is the following, so I'm going to go ahead and write that. I hadn't finished my work, so I couldn't leave work at, at that time. So what I would like for you to do next is I would like for you to practice this concepts, practice making positive statements following this structure and practice making negative statements. You can follow this structure. Okay, no more explanations unless you have a question at this point. No? All clear? Everything is clear. Everything clear? All right. Mm. Yes. We're going to do an exercise, okay? Let's start with the basics because uh, these are questions and it's all about video, so we need to practice. We can't continue watching it. I need you to practice. Okay. Teacher. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, the, the first event, the past event, it could be in any in any in any path. Yes. Mm -hmm. The first event. Past, past the the or... latest event. Basically, uh -huh, it can be. It can be in any tense of the past, right? Okay. Thank. You're welcome. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? You know, it's really hard to find questions to be discussed uh, for some reason, maybe because this topic is not, you know, the majority of people study basic and intermediate, but not advanced. So I don't have any questions, but we're going to discuss the following. Um, for example, what had you done? by the age of 18. <laughs> so what things have you done? Guys, let's mute the microphone. Loud, I hear children playing. All right, so what had you done by the end of 18? Okay. Um, for example, where had you traveled before you graduated high school? I'm going to abbreviate it like this. Those are the questions we'll discuss, okay? And what had you learned by the age of seven? So you have probably already learned how to read at that age, okay? Uh, so that you can use, I will say, before you turned seven. So I want you to use a combination of both, past and past perfect. Okay, and what subjects have you studied by 2010? So check how old you were, right? And finally, what places have you been to? So this is not limited to traveling, but it could be El Salvador, right? What places have you been to by the age of 21? Or let's say the majority of you are like 21, right? Uh, no, we're gonna say 18 because we have Gabriel who is 19, so 
it's not applicable for him. <laughs> so these questions we're gonna discuss, okay? Um, let's see if you're doing it right. I will ask Fatima, help me out. So what places had you been to by the age of 18? Um, when I turned 18, I... That would be before. Before, sorry. Or before, by the time. I turned 18, I had been, um, I don't know. I had been. Had you traveled abroad? No. <laughs> well, but you can say Chalatenango, for example, you know. Yeah. <laughs> places in El Salvador. You can talk about the departments in El Salvador. Yes. Oh, you can mention that. Um, I, I, I the didn't travel thing so is much. <laughs> it's difficult for me. Um, no, you can say I, by the age of 18. I turned 18, I had been two. Yes, but you two. can make it negative, Fatima. You can say by the age of 18. Yes. I <laughs> Yes, I, had I haven't months. traveled much. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Because right now what we're going to practice right. guys, is affirmative and negative both. So you can, if it's negative, be honest and say, no, I hadn't traveled by that time. Now I have, right? But at the time I hadn't. Okay. Before I turned 18, I hadn't traveled much. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Let's discuss these questions. We will do that for about 12 minutes and with that we'll finish. Okay. So questions we will see tomorrow. Let's practice in small groups. Take a screenshot of the questions, please. I will send them in, in a little bit, but here. We're gonna practice in groups of three. Let's do it. Let's practice. Accept the invitation. I had been in Honduras and Guatemala. Okay. You have studied the university. Uh-huh. Okay. And Miguel Angel, what had you done by the age of 18? Um, I, I haven't to have, uh, I had, I had already to the high school and I hadn't, I hadn't had her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, good. And, <laughs> and using the negative form, that's good. Lisa, I graduated from, from high school. Excuse me, Tisha. I had graduated from high school. From high school. Oh, from. school. Uh, yeah, okay. from. Okay. I. Okay. I. The next one. Where okay. have you traveled? Age of eighteen, I had finished high school. I had started university already too. Okay. Uh, I hadn't drunk alcohol. 
before I <laughs> turn 18 either. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so many things. before you graduate HS? It's high school. High school, yes. Okay. Uh, Juan, what had you learned before you turned a, a seven? Seven. This is difficult. <laughs> had you learned how to write and read? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, Something that's, like that. that's the answer. Before I turn seven, I have learned to write and to read. And to uh -huh. color, to cut, to pay, to stick things, paste them. You see, that's what you have to remember about your childhood. To play, to speak, to walk, many things. Well, In yeah. case I have learned when I was the most common. <laughs> the most common places to visit. Yes. Yeah, I think me too. Before I turned, well, before I graduated from high school, I have visited also. Como a la edad de 18. What had you, what had you done at that age? Como que ha hecho sus 18 años. Hello, teacher. Um, <laughs> Well, um, I, I have, um, I haven't done, haven't done anything. Um, the side, the side can. Uh, oh, I, I haven't done anything interesting. <laughs> No, but maybe maybe something naughty, nice. Jose. Jose, had you drunk, had you drunk alcohol before the age of eighteen? Be honest. <laughs> He's going to say, of course. No. <laughs> really? No. Neither. No. Um. Before. No, I hadn't. I hadn't drank. I hadn't drunk alcohol. That's good. No. Okay. Teacher, teacher, let me tell you something. I was confused <laughs> when <laughs> when you say when you said that uh, this topic was a little bit um, confused or difficult confused to explain. Thing? And I said, yeah, it is easy. But I was confused. I was thinking in the present perfect. And when I started to 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 review uh, all my notes, I I noticed that we was not using the auxiliary have uh -huh, because we are using have using. because we are in another topic, <laughs> in another sentence, yeah, another tense. tense. Yeah, yeah, in another tense. Yeah. So I was confused. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, when it's time to talk about it and use it, it gets difficult because it gets confusing. Yeah. So I was like, oh, really? It's easy for everyone. Okay, no, but no. Everyone who said it was easy, right? I was it's like, not that easy, no. <laughs> no problem. But yes, okay. that's the meaning. In my, that's the meaning. Like, ¿qué había hecho a esa edad? Cuando tenía. So it's like, that's the question. It's the same in Spanish, same thing, uh, tense. Okay, I will check yeah. over teams, all right? I'll be back. Bye. I was 17. 17? That's why I was wondering, because I, I did my first grade when I was six, and I also graduated from high school when I was 17. So, and I did a vocational, let me see. Yep, uh, a vocational high school, three years. Question? You need to use the word had and the verb in past participle. With so, a verb. Yeah, with a verb. So 
could you repeat the, the sentence did, that you said and, and let's try to transform it. When I was, no, when I, um, I was learned to skate when I had, uh, when I had seven no, years. The oh. verb, the verb, Noe, is when I was seven. You're not using when that. Look, okay, Noe, okay. Uh, maybe this is one of the only tenses where I'm going to recommend you use Spanish. You think in Spanish. It's the only one. You know I never speak Spanish to you. You know it. But this time, <laughs> yeah. I will recommend it. Okay, so look, it's going to go like this, right? Cuando tenía siete, ya había aprendido a patinar. Okay, let's do that. So, cuando tenía when siete. I was seven. Say it, no, eh? When I was seven, okay. I have learned to no, skate. Have, no, because have is he aprendido. We need to say había. So, había is had. Uh, I have learned. To skate. To skate. You say mm -hmm. it's easier. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. And it's very similar to present perfect. You only have to change the auxiliary. Instead of have, you say have. That's it. You have to okay. put the auxiliary in the past. Yep, very good. Continue. Thank you. It's very good. Maybe the weather. Yes, the weather is very good. Right now is really. Or a park. Something. Maybe Costa del Sol, the beach of Costa del Sol. Okay. And... All righty. Uh, did you finish all the questions? Yes, we finished. Yes, we finished. Awesome. Was it complicated? The questions were difficult. Uh, ah, okay, because you had to think. <laughs> yes. All right, tomorrow we need to do more exercises so that you can consolidate the structure. Because so, um, I guess when you see it, it, it looks easy, right? But when you try to use it, then it becomes complicated. So we're gonna do more exercises tomorrow. Uh, also more speaking practice. And maybe we're even going to listen to a song and see how they use past perfect. I'll try to find one. If not, then I guess we'll not do that. Not tomorrow, maybe right? On Monday, maybe teacher. Next week. On Monday, teacher. Yeah, on Monday. Tomorrow, no, I'm going. I'm going, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Monday. Never mind. Yep. And I might send you information. I didn't give you the examples without the the subject so mm. on monday remind me please i will definitely forget to do that so please remind me on monday <laughs> i know it will happen okay teacher you have homework please remind me on monday <laughs> okay i hope you have a beautiful okay, weekend. thank you for being in class take care thank you, okay thank you bye. see you guys have a good weekend. Bye. monday bye. bye teacher have a nice weekend thank you